So why don't we start? You can um, say your name and who you, you know who you are, what you do, and sure. then if you want to jump into like your experience with clubs or your perspectives on nightlife or the history of it or any of your you know, as a performer, any of the things that come yeah. to mind. Cool. Um, so I'm Cameron Alexander. Uh, I go by Empty Flash online. Uh, it's a, kind of my stage name. Um, I am a software engineer as a day job with a company called JW Player that does uh, video, has a video tech platform for hosting videos. Um, but by night, I am a live code performer. Um, I create visuals with code, improvised, uh, that accompanies music that is also made with code, improvised at um, what we call algor raves. And these algorithms are, uh, you know, like half like art installation type of uh, deal and half just like your typical like DJ club party, right? And so it's like the idea is um, the code is exposed. So the process of creating this music and creating these visuals are uh, transparent. It's like when you hear music, like DJ music, um, you, it's opaque. You don't really hear kind of like, you don't really see uh, how they're making it. You might see them working with like a turntable or like adjusting knobs and stuff, but you don't really, you can't really gain a deeper understanding of what's going on there. And so that's where this kind of comes in is it's like you're creating these algorithmic structures and you can see what is being done to create them. Um, and that that's kind of like the whole ethos behind it. Uh, we, we likened it to uh, the fact that like um, a lot of the algorithms that govern our lives are uh, opaque. Um, we, we can't really peer into them like Facebook or Instagram or all these like feeds and social media uh, like ad um, trackers all over the place, right? And um, they govern our lives. So like in our space, in the world that we want to create in our clubs, we want to uh, make that, make it clear that there's like an alternative to that, um, with this like openness. Um, and that's reflected in, um, throughout like kind of our, um, paradigm. Like it's a very open, inclusive environment. We try to make sure it's like safe for everyone and, um, and really like a positive experience. Um, but yeah, we've, we play, um, very, we overlap a lot with, um, t typically, I guess, uh, because like this live coding idea is not a, um, it's not a genre of music. It's like a practice, uh, more than anything. And we get a lot of different styles. People have their own thing that might fit into like, oh, this is drum and bass music, or, um, this is like kind of like noise music or um, so we, we get a, a lot of overlap with communities like there's like the modular synth community in, in New York City and all of these kind of fall under the umbrella of like the um, DIY scene um, just these shows of people like uh, setting it up everything up themselves like the entire setup and uh, just like having a party and uh, we, we buy and uh, a lot into the rave culture like um, everything being completely like uh, transient um, and so that is typically like it kind of reflected in our kind of movement over the years between uh, we used to play a lot of shows at like this bar called Sunnyvale which is just gone now um, we used to do a lot of baby castles which was like this uh, really cool like indie game uh, uh, arcade bar um, that's sort of been the most recent, not really form of it, but like the its predecessor is this place called Wonderville in uh, Bushwick area that is um, same, same vibe. Like it has just like a bunch of arcade games along the walls and they're not like old arcade games, they're like new indie games. Like these indie developers create arcade cabinets for their games and um, they have a, they have that and that's a great place to perform because they just have a stage and it's like, you know, invite your friends, we'll handle 
the live stream will handle the, all the setup and everything, uh, the door people, um, and they just come and we uh, have a big party. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really That's um, very cool. Really so is this, um, I, just, I just got inspired to think about that space and that it is like throwing a party. It is like how maybe a club space was activated in another, another time, but because of this technology, and because I'm not sure about the developers and the games, that I love the idea that they're building cabinets for their games, yeah. and that maybe they're even online, and they're sort of connecting with people outside of that space. Yeah. Do you see this environment um, and as an analogous environment to those kind of club scenes in some way, whether it's about community or about right. self-expression or creativity or those kinds of things? Yeah, definitely. And I think that's the way that a lot of early clubs kind of started before they were this grand big thing it, it must have been like you know hey i am a, in charge of this space and i want to have parties in it and like i set it up to be a place to have parties um and so that i'm sure like it grew into what it is now from from that and um i i kind of think that in a lot of ways this the idea of the like these diy shows and like giving uh kind of um lowering the barrier of entry for people to be able to perform and, and um, uh, learn about, you know, what it actually takes to be a performer and to, um, to kind of like control the vibe of a party. Um, I think that is, has the potential to grow and then eventually turn into, you know, here we're back at that space again where we have clubs and it's just like a, a churn, it's a cycle and I think this is kind of that's where we are now is like those, that base level of, um, you eventually uh, either uh, grow into something else and then like fade off or fizzle out. So it's kind of uh, continuous. Going? If you were to look into your crystal ball, what would you imagine the future of these spaces would be like? Yeah, I, I don't know how much, um, like I would love it if these spaces spaces could continue to be more of like a um, open and like not like oh you need to have been you need to have some sort of establishment to um, be able to to do things. I think that's like it's good that we have both for the most part, but like the movements within that is kind of like the interesting part, right? Like where you have like. Uh, someone starts this thing and it's like a recurring party or something and eventually it gets so big that it doesn't fit in the space anymore and that's where it makes sense to move on into these like more established uh, like famous club spaces or, or having like parties at like elsewhere or, um, like Rubilad or um, what is the other one uh, House of Yes like all those ones right there and like Ridgewood I feel like are, are the kind of like bigger, more established spaces that um, I've seen a lot of um, a lot of kind of movements or, or things shift into being that it's like the next step up. Um, so I think it makes sense, and especially like given that a physical space has actual limitations, like you eventually like you start turning out an audience that's like too big to fit in the space. Um, and that's kind of something our, our movement has been seeing a little bit more like this, when we occupied this space, it was like the 50 people capacity was actually like kind of hard to work around. We had to, I don't think we necessarily turned anyone away at the doors, but we definitely like limited the tickets and, and sold out on that front. Um, and I think we filled it, uh, I think we were probably over capacity at some point. But <laughs> That's uh, that's okay. I don't think it's that hard of a limit. Not like the fire code or anything. Yeah. Cool. Do you have any memories of like your first experiences with club spaces, or like how did you get interested in wanting to? I know your your you know the technology has probably brought you there, but yeah. you have to sort of make a conscious choice and decision to be creative in those spaces. Right. Curious about your initial inspiration. For yeah, um, I guess like I don't really know what drew me to it initially, outside of just seeing it and 
thinking that it was it looked interesting. Um, like clubs in general, like I, there's uh, uh, Barbarella's in Houston. Uh, it's kind of the first like real club club that I ever went to, and I went there a lot, um, and that was just like fun. They played music that I liked, and uh, I felt like that was kind of hard to find as like a 21 year old uh, like finally can uh, legally go to these places and not like have to worry about whether or not they card and um, going there and having it be like music I like and that like kind of feeding into like the community of people um, kind of taught me that like those those things go hand in hand like like-minded people typically like the same amount of kind of music and then you that's how you create a community is by having a space for you to gather um, and so when I moved to New York, uh, I had seen this thing from somebody that I followed on Twitter and I was like, if I'm ever there, I'm going to do that. Cause it is interesting to me. It's really cool. And I've been making, um, like video art, I guess you'd call it, or like generative art. Um, it's like visual art, but it, it doesn't really f have much of a place in like galleries, right? Like it, it moves and. I could do installations, but the scene in, in Houston for like new media art was not really um, up to the place where it is in, in New York and some of the other more uh, bigger cities. Um, and so this felt like it was finally like an outlet for that creativity is um, being able to, to show it like projected and for it to go with some music. And like, I have been drawn to, I always, felt like very um, drawn to improvisation. Um, so like just part of my personality. Um, and yeah, I think that that aspect of it is, is really like kind of the reason that I keep doing it, right? Is it's like an exploration that I am doing with everyone else and um, taking, taking feedback from the crowd and like, putting it out to them and creating this cycle um, and just like working with the, the music and like crafting a vibe and, uh, and sending it out into the you know, space is like, that's just um, really fascinating to me. generative nature of making and receiving and then sent giving and you know yeah um, it's about surprising yourself too mm -hmm. right? absolutely yeah and it can be addictive to, to a creative person a yeah surprise. yeah it's just like uh, feeds into the human need to like explore really is like um, why do you do it it's it's that cycle right that's the thing that keeps you moving um, amen yeah <laughs> Thank you, Cameron. Totally. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate the time.